It's a funny one. It, uh, I started on it about oh, somewhere between 15 and 20 years ago, and it was all to do with um, uh, the Brumbies had an old machine over there that someone had built and was just a, had a wind-up winch on it. Yeah. Eddie Jones at the time was coaching. That's how long ago it was. Really? And he said, do you think you can build us something like this? And yeah. I said, yeah, and I put my mind to it. Anyway, I came up with this machine that had so much fun building and it was the talk of the town because there was yeah. balls going everywhere, you know, like it just... Uh, <laughs> Four o'clock. Talk about balls in the air. <laughs> yeah, that's right. As I was telling you, Rodney, I, when I first let it off in my workshop down in the main street, it ripped a sheet of iron off the, off the roof. I had no idea. That's how much force when you're developing things, you've got no idea how much energy yep. is going to be uh, going on as well. Welcome, everybody, to the Serif Machinery Podcast. Today, uh, I am in uh, New South Wales in Borua uh, with Matt Corkhill. Uh, Matt's got a very interesting story to tell. Um, Matt has uh, obviously some uh, very interesting uh, backgrounds. Um, Matt, thank you very much for your time, mate. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Rodney. No, yep. My pleasure. Um, Matt, start off with, uh, what, do you, what sort of business do you run here? Uh, it's predominantly engineering, so uh, machining, hydraulics, fabrication. There's a uh, retail section out the front uh, that we cover, um, all belts, bearings, pulleys, anything to do with the agricultural business uh, when it comes to breakdowns and that sort of thing. Yep, yep. Mm. I think you're underselling yourself when you say you've got a, a retail business. <laughs> We've got... Uh, Got the gun shop? Yeah, we do. We yep. sell firearms. supplies. Yep, that's it. Firearms are a big part of the business, uh, especially yep. being in the country of growing up on a farm. Uh, my family is still farming and uh, there was uh, – I come from a large family, so I have nine siblings. Right. Um, yeah, so – and not a huge block, so we're uh, – <laughs> so you so grew to, up. You grew up locally. Yeah, grew up locally. Yeah. So yep. we're we're three or four generations in Borua now. Right. Um. And uh, yeah. So the farming. You know, we all did our time on the farm when we were children, but uh, more yep. now. Uh, I mean, obviously, you can see what's what's happened here. But the farm wasn't big enough to support us all. Plus, I uh, I don't mind farming, but I enjoy yep. my engineering. So yep. that's uh, that's. And I'm sure you probably come in very handy at, yeah, <laughs> at yeah. breakdown time. Well, very much so. Yeah, there's always the family discount, of course, so uh, sure. when things are breaking. But uh, yep. but growing up on a farm and getting into the firearms and shooting as a boy, so that was always a passion, and uh, yep. that's where uh, I've been lucky enough to uh, lucky enough to carry on with that. Be able to yeah. incorporate the two, yeah, the two sort of passions, and yeah, and uh, as you sort of mentioned, it'd be pretty hard to to operate a, a firearm business. Yeah, um, without branching out a bit like ourselves with with what we've done with our yep. business, yep. Um, with you know looking at uh, the importing exp- and uh, direct sales sort of stuff. Um, yep. Very interesting. Where does the Corkill family come from? Uh, we're from the Isle of Man originally on my father's side, and then yep. we go over on the mother's side. We're uh, we're Scottish. Yep. Uh, yeah. So we came out here in around about eighteen hundred. Yep. And you've got a bit of a love for motorcycles. Yeah, I do. I do. So. I'm not sure where that came from, but uh, the I guess in the Isle of Man, it's obviously in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, the uh, yeah, there's a bit of uh, a bit of manxman in me, and uh, obviously it's quite a treacherous. Uh, the uh, Isle of Man TT is quite very, a treacherous. very well known, isn't it? Yeah, 38 miles. Uh, it's pretty solid riding. So I like my uh, old Ducatis, and a, a hero of mine was Mike Halewood, and I have one of his. Uh, well, they named Ducati named a bike after him, which yep. uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to have. But I enjoy. Uh, Getting around the country roads on the Halewood, and it's uh, it's probably not dissimilar when you've got uh, you know you've got sort of kangaroos and foxes yeah, and right. wombats and cows and all those things you're dodging, you know. Yeah, yeah so. oh, very interesting, very interesting. Mm. So you've um, you've been brought up here, had the nine nine siblings. Mm-hmm. Um, from there, you went to boarding school. Yeah, I was uh, off to St Gregory's in Campbelltown, which is an agricultural college, and uh, I had the opportunity there to. Uh, to, I finished school in year 10 uh, because I just loved my machining and that was something that I was able to do there at school that offered that. Um, and I, I I had the grades to go on and I was playing pretty handy rugby league at the time and I was wondering um, whether or not I should uh, stay yeah. there and keep playing my rugby league. It was Commonwealth Bank Cup time and that sort of thing and yeah. uh, or whether I wanted to pursue my uh, career and, uh, and, you know, I suppose it's uh, – it's something that I've often thought what would have happened, but uh, the old what ifs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's part of life's journey. Yep, absolutely. Um, and uh, I decided to do the trade, and that's where it. Uh, there's a. I was trained as a machine tool fitter, which is a glorified yep. tool maker. And uh, yep, uh, there was a, a fellow in Annandale in Sydney that offered me the opportunity there. Um, 
uh, Harry Tatum is an old uh, Englishman, and um, and uh, yeah, I I was interviewed, and I was lucky enough to land that apprenticeship. Yep, yep. Interesting. We won't go into the reason why. <laughs> we'll keep that one for the, yeah. the off yeah, for another day. Yeah. yeah. Um, very interesting. So once you finished your apprenticeship, um, what was the what was the go there? You you come straight back to. Burua? Yeah, I did. I um I came back to Burua. Uh, I always wanted to come home, and uh, yeah. I had the opportunity to stay in Sydney. And funnily enough, in the sort of mid to late eighties, Sydney wasn't a bad place to be. Really, I mean, yeah. I, I think it's as uh, a young bloke too. As a young bloke, yeah, especially coming out of a boys' boarding school, yeah. agricultural college, you know, yeah. like it was pretty, it was pretty lively. Yeah. Um, I uh, I ended up I came, I played rugby league at St Gregory's, but then I came out and ended up playing rugby union. Um, for Subby's Hunters Hill, game. yeah, yeah, <laughs> Subby's Subby's sub district side Hunters Hill that a few of my mates were playing for. Yep. Um, and uh, my older brother was a very good rugby union player and played for New South Wales country. And you sort of, uh, you know, you, you you like to walk in his footsteps a bit, you know. And um, so I took on the rugby. So did that, came home, and then uh, started working for uh, an engineering firm in Young. Yep. Uh, and worked there for a couple of years and then the opportunity came up for me to buy a lathe and a few other little bits and pieces yep. and uh, I started in the back shed on the family farm and um, just went from there. Yep. So what were some of your earlier sort of uh, jobs that you were doing? Was that more just uh, general maintenance farm sort of repair, repair work? Or? Yeah, very yep. much so. A lot of repair work, farm machinery. Um, I was still doing, I was doing some gunsmithing, gun bluing and different things at that stage. So I always had a yep. passion there as I was explaining. Uh, ended up doing that as well. Um, and uh, just, yeah, machining, fabrication, a little bit of hydraulics. Uh, yep. I was on the farm for about two years and then my old company came to me and said, look, we've got a big contract uh, to, to uh, rebuild this uh, railway wheel turning machine out at Auburn in Sydney and they needed a hand. So I went back and helped them for 12 months. So I yep. shut down my shop on the farm. That also helped me finance um, some new equipment and what have you to eventually to be able to move into Borua yep. and, get, and get going in there. Um, and and then uh, was that down the main street? Yeah, that was yeah, down in the, the main shop. street. Yeah, there was a there was an old motor garage there, and back then Boral was named as a village, so they were just happy to see any sort of business uh, yeah. opening up. And you know, so just for the for people who don't know, Boral was only got about twelve hundred people. Yeah, twelve hundred people. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. So it's sort of between Yass, Yass and Cowra, Cowra Young and Cookwell, that. actually. Yeah. And so it's in a beautiful farming area. Mm, Very yeah. nice. Yeah, it is. We call it, it God's country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty, uh, you know, a pretty solid rainfall, which is which is obviously what you're looking for. And yeah. you can have, uh, you know, you got sheep, fine wool, medium wool cattle uh, yep. cropping, so it's pretty versatile as well. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And um, we were talking before when we were, when we first got here about um, just the service that you provide to the local community as well, and how important that is. Yeah, it is. It is, Rodney. You, you, I think you, um, if if we're predominantly a breakdown business when it comes to um, when it comes to the farming side of things, and things only ever break usually when you're using them. That's so right. you need it fixed in a hurry. Now, if you don't have that service here or the parts or equipment, um, you you know they're going to take off to Young or Cow or somewhere like that. When they're over there, they'll do a bit of food shopping. They'll get something to eat. They'll yeah. you know they, they just do other things while they're there, and all that business is lost to the to the uh, to the borough community. So yeah. to have. I think I was explaining I have a lot of product on the shelf here. They'll probably end up popping in the coffin with yeah. me when I go because uh, I'll never use it. But it only takes the tiniest little thing to get someone out of trouble. And, Absolutely. And that's quite satisfying in itself. Yeah. Yep. And when you start providing that service, people will come in yeah. and they'll, they'll can be your first port of call. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. you've got the hydraulic uh, yeah. operation as well, so you can go through to all the hydraulic hoses. Yeah. You've got yeah. Uh, lades. You've got uh, a lot of product in there on the on the shelves as well. There, there is, because Burrow is predominantly a farming community and, yeah. um, you know, there's not a lot of industry here. So to yeah. have the hydraulics and those sort of things here, got a fair bit of money tied up and just for agricultural equipment it doesn't really necessarily pay for itself but it's a, yep. it's a nice thing to have there you know yep. so and we, and we incorporate it into other machinery that we build you know, yep. as well so it's uh, it complements one of them yeah yeah mm. uh, and it's one of those things too when we look at a community and this is sort of going to that that sort of farming background uh, that we've both got um how valuable this type of service is to a community because as soon as you don't have it Oh, geez, we oh, we would have we would have supported them more if we had have known. Yeah. So just a shout out to all the all the people support your local guys yeah. at, at the first first port because having this type of service, 
that could mean the difference between a 15 minute breakdown for your farmer out the road or having to go in three hours because the wife wanted to come for a drive and then she was going to do the shopping. Yeah, that's right. And that's all good and well, but at the end of the day, a lot of that time, that time you know, it's gone out the window too. So, Well, you do, and it doesn't necessarily, you might drive to Young to get something fixed and it doesn't necessarily mean they can fix it straight away for that's you true. as well. So you can sit there for a few hours or you may have to leave it overnight and, and you end up back. going back again. So uh, all that uh, all that comes into play. Things might be slightly more expensive, but uh, I mean, we are a little bit remote, so you've got freight costs and things yep. like that to get them here. But uh I think most people um, understand that farmers also are pretty funny. They're notorious for having a crack at things themselves before right. they bring it in. So, uh, yeah, that's what really makes ends meet when they've had yep. a crack at it. So it's uh, you know, break an <laughs> easy right. out off or something. Yeah, it's that's ridiculous. It just <laughs> turns it into a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm. So you've had your you had your time at boarding school. You've done your trade. You, you moved back here. Where did the enforcer concept? Mm. Because that's something that we're going to get into. Uh, where did the enforcer scrum machine come into it? Um, <clears throat> when I uh, when I was playing playing rugby league at St Greg's, I played in the front row there. So naturally, when I came out uh, from St Greg's and started playing rugby for Hunters Hill, I just thought I'll slot into the front row there. But I can assure you, <laughs> they are two very different scrums. <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> if anybody's played both sports, <laughs> both codes, they'll know. Yeah, you've only got to watch it. You know, one's one's got a few kilos of pressure in it, and the other one's got sort of a ton and a half. Yeah. You know? So there's a big difference when you're up front. One hundred percent. And uh, I was. You know, when I, when I went into those scrums, I thought, oh, I've got to get out of here. I'm not going to survive because I'm, I'm not a big guy by any means. And um, there was an old hooker called Buckets, and he usually the props look after the hookers, but in this case, the hooker was looking after the props. And he said, uh, he said, you know, hang in there and you'll, uh, you'll be right. And there's that old expression, you know, unless you're a front rower, like you'd never really know how dark it gets, but it could get pretty dark. Yeah. You know, so. And back in those days. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, you line up like a couple of old Dawson Horn Rams from yep. a few feet out and let let one let your opposition have it. But that's right. So I started playing in the front row there, and and old buckets kept convincing me that I was going all right, you know. And I persevered with it, and, and ended up it, it ended up being a great thing because you um when you're a uh, when you're a smaller prop, um, you you rely heavily on your technique, 100%. and it also allows you to get inside the bigger props as well. And um, so you can get you can escape the energy a little bit. Yep. Um, so I persevered with that um, and played a few years there. And um, you know, you're always stepping, you're always coming away from a game wondering about what you can do better and and things like that. And uh, or if you do if, if you do get if you do get busted up in the scrum a bit, you uh, you, you li- literally lie awake thinking about what you did wrong. And um, yep. and quite often you're just out scrummaged, and that's that's the art of it. Yeah, because um, it is an art. Yeah. Oh, my word, it's it is, yeah. And, and it's a bit of technique. You can't just be the biggest bloke. Yeah, not at all, not at all. And it's uh, left, you know, you've got loose head and tight head and they're worlds apart as well, you know. So it's probably the only position on the paddock in the front row that you can't just slot anyone else in there. You know, you could slot a tight head on the wing if you needed to or even at fullback, but you can't put a fullback or a winger in a tight head, you know. So that's uh, that's how it rolls a bit. Um, so I came home and I was quite happy with uh, how my scrummaging was going. And um, anyway, we were using an old machine that, and my, back then, most scrum machines, especially in country clubs, were designed and built by someone within the club that could yeah. use a welder. More often than not, it could have even been a back who had no idea of scrummaging whatsoever. But uh, so we, we had <laughs> they an old. Could have got dirty. <laughs> <laughs> no, mate, no, that's right. That's right. They. Uh, um, we had uh, we had an old machine up there, which was great, and then there was just the opportunity there for a little bit of improvement. And a, and a mate of mine uh, from Yass approached me and said, "Look, we we're looking at getting a new machine," and um, yep. and said, "Can you come over and have a look at uh, the Brumbies have got one?" And they they had a machine there that was made by a New Zealand company. This is back in the late nineties, and okay, yep. um, and it was just a, just a basic sled. And they said, "Oh, what about one of these?" And I said, "Oh, well, they're easy enough to build." And I said, "But look, I can see problems there already, you know." And um, <laughs> Um, and they just said, well, look, can you, can you build this one? And I said, yeah, yeah I'm happy to build one. And I built one for Borua. Then an old, old hooker from West heard about this machine as well. And I was looking at it with the, over at the Brumbies. And, um, so the, probably the original machine that I built was for the West Rugby Club in, uh, in, uh, Canberra and I was yeah. asked the old hooker said look can you put some wheels on that for us so we can wheel it in and out of the shed because 
any anyone in the scrum will tell you that you always scrum is usually on a Thursday night at the end of training. It's pouring rain, the machine's in the shed, and you'd go, you know what? We've got to put the pads on it. We've got to try and get it out onto the paddock. I oh, will leave it till next week. Yeah. So and it never gets used. Never yeah. gets used. So the fact that we put wheels on it to be able to get it in and out was a great thing. Plus, when you're on the ground and you're churning up the ground with your feet, you can engage the wheels and move it along so you're not churning up the same area all the time as yep. well. So that was a big plus. He then said, can you put a seat on it so, so I can sit within the machine and have a look down along the line of the scrum as well. So yep. we did that and still to this day, we still have those wheels. We've upgraded it, upgraded the wheel system and we still have the seat within the machine and um, yep. made some other changes. And then the Brumbies heard about this machine, so they came to me and I... And I knew a few of the guys that were playing from the Brumbies from back from when I was in Sydney. Yep. And uh, basically the, um, the forwards coach then was a fellow called Ewan McKenzie and he was an ex-Wallaby, an ex, ex-Brumby player. And he yep. just said – Very well known. Very well known, yeah. Probably probably the best tight head in the world at the time of his, uh, his day. And uh, he just said, look, Matty, um, we heard about the machine. Can we uh, – you know, are you interested in uh, sort of doing something for us? And I said, well, yeah, that, that's great. And I said um, – I'll build something. And they said, look, we can't really afford, we don't have the money to buy one from you, but we're happy to endorse it for you and we'll be your guinea pigs. And what yep. great guinea pigs to have. That's and, right. <laughs> I mean, they, they probably had, the, they had, I think they played Auckland in the first year, at that, you know, and, and uh, in the final and lost, but they, they were just, uh, they were pretty handy, um, a pretty handy side. And, and yep. they, they came together from everyone else's leftovers from, you know, um, everyone else had picked the eyes out of them. And then you got these old blokes and, uh, they, uh, they did very well, a lot of experience there. So they were my guinea pigs and the Brumbies got it started for me and then, um, yep. yeah, still to this day, they endorse it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's also too, like uh, I've got a few ailments now in shoulders and things like that and I think that's from using old machines and machines that, you know, you'd come out from a scrummaging session against a machine with pins and needles and you'd go, oh, that was a great scrum. You know, oh. <laughs> that was just, yeah, that, you know, that one really, really stung. Well done, boys. Lots of energy. Yeah, and now I'm sort of just like- just sort of, yeah. So I, I, not that the scrum's that comfortable, but, you know, I have tried to make it a little more, a little more uh, comfortable for the boys up front. Yep. So that, that's come into play as well. And we're continually improving that, yep. you know, with feedback from the coaches. Yep. So that's a rotating sort of thing, too, that you've got with those guys. Yeah. Because yeah. you'll take, take some feedback. Yeah, have a bit of a meeting and then uh, implement some some improvements or changes, and constantly yeah. looking at uh, new new ways to to support it. Well, well, um, what it what it is, Rodney, too, is that like once once money changes hands, you have almost severed the relationship. Like if I'd have taken money back then, yep. which I could have done with at the time because I was trying to get my business going, um, that would have been the end of it. But yep. the fact that the fact that I didn't and still don't to this day, so we sponsor all the. Aussie Super Rugby guys and the Wallabies as well under that same system and it yep. works well. So no money's ever changed hands and we supply new equipment. Yep. We turn it over every 12 months. We take yep. the old equipment back and yep. they get the latest things and technology. There's no breakdowns and it's yep. um, and it's uniform uh, across the board through all the Super Rugby sides and the Wallabies. So they know they're going to be hitting the same machine. Yep. And they're so if they change clubs, game. they're going to the same equipment. Yep. Yeah. yeah, which which is a which is a big thing because you don't want hesitation in the scrum when you're engaging, you know. Yeah. So if you know that machine and you know it's right, it's like driving a new car. If you get in a new car, you're always a little bit hesitant. Whereas if you know that car, you'll drive it confidently, yeah. and it's the, the scrum machine's exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're not talking, like you said, a couple hundred kilos. Yeah, yeah that's right. We're talking about some big forces exerted through that scrum. My word, yeah, well up over a ton of pressure just hitting the machine. We've got way pads that we can put in the machine, and um, yeah. you know it can be. Up, up in excess of 12, 1,300 kilos, and that's against a machine that's sitting dormant. So when you get another pack coming at you with the same energy, you've, you're talking three over three tonne of pressure across six guys up front. And yep. it, uh, you want to get it right, you know. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So even just from a safety point, having that training to get the technique right, yeah. um, that's got to be an improvement for the game because I'm, I'm very interested in this, as you can probably tell. Um, so yeah, looking at, uh, the way that it operates too, with the ability to be able to, um, adjust left and right yeah. between the, between it, um, so that you can really simulate, yep. um, a real sort of scrum, live, live scrum situation, live scrum situation. Yeah. that just means that when these guys are exerting that amount of force in a real life situation, um, in a, in a match, it's a lot safer because yeah. they're better trained. Yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly right. And, I mean, if you don't have confidence against the machine you're using, well, you're not going to have confidence when you go into the real situation. And yeah. um, 
So the fact that the operator can sit on the seat within the machine and operate two brake levers, which yep. is which has in two independent spike rollers at the back, yep. um, it's a bit like a differential in a car um, in that you can lock one up and the outside roller will always turn faster than the inside roller. Yep. And the other thing is too that's extremely important is you've got to look after the surface. So. You know, when you're dropping a machine on some, I've had them on the MCG, I've had them on the SCG, I've had them in the you know, North's Cricket Ground and things yep. like that. I mean, you're not going to get past the greenkeeper. You know, <laughs> they're, right. so so in the pecking order yep. of uh, of scrummaging, you've got the greenkeeper, yep. the front row, and then the coaches, yep. and that's it. <laughs> that's if, you, yeah, so um, you've got to be able to look after the ground, and if you if you don't have that outside. Um, roller being able to turn faster than the inside roller yep. when when they're when they're wheeling the machine, it'll just churn the ground up and and that'll come and your scrum session will come to a grinding halt. Yep. You know, so um, that's the other important part of it as well. Yep. You know, to be able to so make getting sure. that feedback at the end of um, <coughs> each season where they, you you sort of have the meetings with these guys. Mm. Um, how important is that for the product development? Because you're meeting with the greenkeeper mm. at times, yeah. Yeah, my word, yep. my word. Yeah, no, and you that's you're talking about everything like that. Yeah, you do, and that's a lot to do with that transport wheel system. So you can move the machine along the ground, so you know, the boys' yep. boots aren't churning up the same area because yep. you, the, we've got the machine that refined now that it doesn't damage the ground, but the boys' boots do. So yep. you need to be able to move it along. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I found with greenkeepers over the years too, a case of beer goes a long way. <laughs> <laughs> You know, along with along with anyone, I think so. That's yeah, always a, yeah, that's a nice that's a nice thing, Rodney. That uh, they uh, I found that helps. Um, and the feedback, so with the greenkeepers um, and the also the, uh, the the coaches, because how we scrummage now in comparison to how we used to scrummage back in the sort of in, around that in the nineties, yep. eighties, nineties, and you know two thousands, are worlds apart. You know, so yeah. There's actually more energy there now, but you don't get that initial hit because things are much closer. Yep. So, yep. Um, and the way we bind, the bind is a very big thing now. So we've changed our binding bars quite a few times over the years because yep. um, that's that's a very impart a very important part of the uh, of the game up front. You know, because yep. you've got these guys that are six 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 foot to six foot three or four that are packing, you know, this high off the ground, you know, yep. pretty much the height of those pads. So the big, these big boys that are, you know, are well over six foot are engaging about there. So that that's the height of the scrum, you know, and that that's really, that's probably about six to 700 mil off the ground. That's exactly right. That's so, what we're talking about before. Yeah. It's looking at, at how low and how much force that is driven through yeah, that, yeah. that low height. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, but, it's hard to do, but it's also hard to per perfect. Yeah. There's a lot of training that goes into oh, it. Oh, it's, it's phenomenal. And, and, you know, interestingly enough, the, um, when you've got that much energy, you only need someone to tweak a shoulder or do something and move and the whole thing collapses because they're yeah. self-supporting, yeah. you know, these guys yep. up front. Yeah, so. without the, the opposition pushing against Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. nothing there. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. You know, yeah. so for those, for those of you out there that, uh, that sort of uh, are always complaining about the scrums and the resets, so it's probably – should recommend that you go and spend a little bit of time in one to see what's involved <laughs> yeah. because uh, it's it's such an important part of the game and it is globally. It's it's yeah. something that we have in our game that the other codes don't, yes. and and it's a, you, to master it and um, you know and look there's 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 not a lot of injuries in the scrum now in comparison. There's more in free play and that yeah. you know they've, they've worked on making the scrum safer yeah. and uh, hence and that goes right back closer. to the juniors now. It does, yeah. Like yeah. Let's go through from you know, under sixes all the way through. Um, it's it's very well uh, introduced yes. at a younger age now. Yeah, but it's also taught uh, even for the representative kids. They've got to do um, safe rugby courses now. Yeah, yeah. And and I just see this type of thing probably being introduced to even those uh, mm. groups um, rather than just the clubs as as well as these uh, rugby rugby training courses. Yeah, um, yeah. So no, it's fantastic. It, it's great to hear that uh, in regards to the feedback you get. And the in continual improvement because that's something that we do as mm. Seraphins. We've we build the the old so product, which is our single disc seater. Mm -hmm. That started from conversations in the paddock with 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 customers mm -hmm. and looking at farming practices. And every year we have always taken away. We always sit down and talk to our customers because they're the yeah. ones that give us the ideas. They're the ones that tell us what what needs to be changed and and things like that. Um, I, so I can completely understand where you're coming from when you're saying that how important it's been for your business and developing this because this is global now. This isn't yeah. just for the 
<laughs> for the local guys. Yeah. And this isn't just for the local comp. We're talking about this has gone. Uh, some of the biggest customers you got is in the Japanese league. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it cashed up too? Well, <laughs> well yeah, that that certainly helps. That uh, pays a few bills. That's right. The the other interesting thing with that too, having that farming background and working on farming machinery, Rodney. It um, uh, if you break this machine down, there's a lot of agricultural based bits yep. and pieces in there, from the hydraulics to the wheels to simple little you know lynch pins and things yep. like that that I probably wouldn't have been able to think of unless I'd been involved in the agricultural side that's of things. Right. So that, that's, been, that's been very helpful. And, and like one of our, our top machine, which is called the Astromax, um, and I named that after an old farmer friend of mine because I was racking my brain because artificial turf was coming into play and, yep. and you know, and, uh, in Japan, especially in a lot of the, uh, a lot of the other nations around the world. And, and the spiked roller system doesn't work on AstroTurf. I mean, no, it just tear it to bits. So. I was trying. I was racking my brain to see what I could um, come up with, and uh, an old friend of mine, Max Corcoran, out the road here, uh, called me up. He had his canola front, which the main frame had twisted on, so I went out to have a look at it, and I saw the yep. belts on the canola front. Yep. I thought, that's it. <laughs> that's it. There's a caterpillar track, there and that's go. what we yep. need, you know, and um, and that's what we use. And and a lot of the French sides, the Japanese sides, the Scottish national side, all now use our Astro Max. Yep. Um, and it's it's a great bit of kit, and uh, and that came from a canola front. You know, so in, in which yeah, yeah, in Barua, you know, and, uh, that's our top machine. Yeah, you know, yeah. So it's uh, it's still the it's such a great side story when, when you think about yeah starting out with just doing an engineering thing and a love for rugby yeah and, yeah and turning it into this global thing where and and it's improving the game and that's yeah. that that would have to be pretty a pretty proud moment. Well, for. well, it is. It's a great thing, Rodney. And also too, when you're talking to the coaches, I mean, everyone has ideas. So the fact that we build the machines here, yeah. You know, we're not just a distributor, so yeah. they can come to us. We've been inventing stuff here for years, so we yeah. can go, yeah, that that's we're capable of doing that. We've tried that; it doesn't really work, and yeah. we can talk them through it because we do it here. Yeah. You know, so you when, there's no middleman; yeah. it, it's it's you're dealing directly with us. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and it, what's even funny? I mean, the Astro Max was quite an interesting yarn because it, the fellow's name was Max Corker, and they got me out to look at the machine, and uh, he gave me a great start back in the beginning when. Uh, when I was, um, you know, it's quite, owns quite a considerable amount of land or, or, uh, he doesn't anymore because he's not with us anymore. But, yep. um, and, uh, when he was, he was, he, he died not long after that. And I went and saw him in hospital and I said, oh, uh, I called him Mr. Corker. I said, Mr. Corker, I've named this machine after you. Yep. And it's called the Astro Max because yep. it's for Astro Turf and yep. his name and was Max. Yeah. And that, and it's, it's just a great and name. It works, sir, doesn't it? Yeah. It, it was a pretty funny yarn. He ran, like I went and saw him. He was in hospital and he was, uh, he was on his way. Uh, on his way out, well, I thought he was, and then the phone rang at five o'clock in the morning, and I picked yeah. up, and it was him, and I and picked up the phone. I thought, oh, this is it. He's yep. he's done, or his family's calling me, and he said, oh, Max Corcoran, and I said, yes, Mr. Corcoran, is everything okay? And he goes, yes. Look, I've been thinking about that machine of yours, you know. So I gave him a new lease of life, which was <laughs> which is pretty funny. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, it's another farm. Yeah, oh, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Um, so obviously you keep the keep the old grain matter ticking over fairly well because just some of the the different products we've seen around, um, different training tools that you've done. Yeah, you got to tell us a bit about this kicking machine. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> this it's punting a, machine. It's, yeah, uh, it's a funny one. It uh, I started on it about oh, somewhere between fifteen and twenty years ago, and it was all to do with. Um, uh, the Brumbies had an old machine over there that someone had built and was just a had a wind up winch on it. And yeah. Eddie Jones at the time was coaching. That's how long ago it was. Really? And he said, you Do you think you can build us something like this? And yeah. I said, Yeah. And I put my mind to it. Anyway, I came up with this machine that had so much fun building and it was the talk of the town because there was yeah. balls going everywhere, you know, <laughs> like it just, uh, <laughs> four you know, o'clock. Talk about balls in the air. <laughs> yeah, that's right. As I was telling you, Rodney, I, when I first let it off in my workshop down in the main street, it ripped the sheet of iron off the, <laughs> off the roof. I had no idea. That's how much force when you're developing things, you've got no idea how much energy yeah. is going to be uh, going on. And uh, I'm yeah. sure it woke up half a burrow because it made a hell of a, a, hell of a sound. Um, so it, it's a catching machine, you know, and you can yeah. a, adjust the uh, the height and the trajectory and it's a drop punt type system. So, yep. you know, it kicks Aussie rules balls and it kicks, uh, you know, rugby league balls, rugby balls, soccer balls, you know. Yeah. And, you sort of make a rod for your own back a bit because when you start developing these things and you've got other product that's already out there and you can relate to this in your game, other product out there that's already selling well, well, that, yeah. that's what's paying the bills. So you've still got you to manufacture yeah, exactly and you right. can't exactly be dragging your staff off to work on developing something else that you don't have time to manufacture anyway because you're, <laughs> you're busy doing the other things. So um, 
I've just started to uh, get back into that again now and I've just simplified it a bit. But once again, this has happened to me about half a dozen times over the years when I start to get yep. back into it, then I get caught up doing other stuff. But That's it. It's something that is a lot of fun. You could take to a party. You could you could use it. You could use it anywhere. You know, it's quite uh, quite easy to operate too. So, yeah. And uh, another thing you've been uh, doing lately, or you have done lately, the the uh, rehab tool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So there's a machine called a scrum truck, which was uh, developed by a uh, by a fellow called Bruce Ross at Sydney University back around the late 90s early 2000 and it's a horizontal squatting machine yep. and it was that uh it was probably a little bit before its time um and, and it's a great concept and and it seems to have reappeared again now and uh and angus spell is um you know, our wallabies loose head is uh, a very very um capable young loose head prop if you um, if you don't know who we're talking about google it yeah he's yeah. a very good player yeah it goes well very strong mobile around the paddock um, yeah uh, he's had a couple of foot injuries at the moment that he's getting on top of. But yep. um, as we we're talking about the energy in the front row, so, it, you know, you have lower back problems and different things uh, these yep. days and feet, obviously, with Angus. But at this time, he had a lower back problem and he was playing for Sydney University and they had one of Bruce's old machines in the university gym and he dug it out of the corner. Yep. And he found that um, he could get his uh, his strength, his core strength, uh, using this scrum truck, this horizontal squatting machine. Um, without it hurting his lower back, which he was finding with the with the uh, with the um, traditional a vertical squat. the yep. traditional squats, you know. So he asked me whether I could uh, just build him one, and uh, and I said, "Well, go and talk to Bruce and make sure he's okay with it," which he was. Yep. And we built this machine, and obviously spec'd it right up, and it, it does a lot of other stuff now that the old machine didn't. Has floating pads and different things, so you've really got to work on your core yep. as well as. Uh, as well as the weight, and um, we're we're doing a bit of a relaunch of that. the 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 model that we made then for Angus is now sitting in the um, in the Waratahs Gymnasium, yep. and uh, and it gets used pretty much every day. Uh, and uh, it's another prime example of something that uh, that we've developed that I haven't been able to get back to to <laughs> sort of to, to keep manufacturing yeah, that's it. because uh, that's it. we're running out of time. But um, yeah, yeah, it's it's a great bit of kit, and it's safe. It's safe, and it. Um, uh, it, it, it it's it, it's not just for front rowers. It's for anyone that's trying yep. to develop a core strength. You yeah, know, build build out a necessity. Build yeah, and, and yep. then you've seen other benefits as well, like you said. So other, yeah. other you know, yeah. players in other positions can get a benefit out of it, and it and it is a safe tool. Um, it's amazing what Australia can produce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what we do produce, uh, whether it is. Just in a like an engineering company, yep. whether it's an agricultural company, some of the crops we grow, some of the innovative mm. stuff we do, we've got to give a big shout out to ourselves because we do yeah. punch above our weight. Oh yeah, yeah. my word, yeah. my word, and and I and I agree with you there. And I mean, we have to keep Australian made going. You know, like it's uh, like I, I could have my machines built anywhere, but that you're, right. you're sort you are losing control of that. Yeah. Uh, and sure enough, I mean, I've got some very dedicated uh, employees here and, um, and I mean, the business wouldn't be here without them and you guys would be in the same boat, you yeah. know, and, and they love, you know, sit down and you'll, they'll watch TV or they'll see a rugby test and there's a fair chance they'll see something, you know. Whether, pretty proud of it. Pretty proud of it, you know, pop yeah. up on the screen that they're using. Um, but we have to promote our Australian-made product. and uh, Absolutely. You know, and, and we know it's not easy. I mean, we've been through pretty tough times with COVID and staffing and all that sort of thing and um, yeah. we're starting to come out the other end. We were very fortunate in the country areas and like the city yeah. areas where they had lockdowns and things like that, we were quite lucky. Yeah. Um, but we've managed to keep the business going and um, – and, and and that sport thing, I think, is important because when when you're feeling a bit flat about life and times are tough, and That's right. you know, we look forward to our sport, and it gives us the opportunity to get out and um and and have a chat to our mates about it, and just just knock yourself into neutral basically, yep. and forget about work. And uh, I found that with rugby very much, you know, absolutely. And and that goes back to, to one of our podcasts recently um, with John Harper from Mate Helping Mate is that it's it's being around uh, friends, it's being around mates, um, and and having some of those conversations just to get things talking. But you need that uh, break away from what you're doing. And yeah. farming itself can be very stressful. Um, we're talking about a lot of the times we're talking about big investments mm. of time and money, um, and sometimes for very little reward. Yeah, it can be very stressful. But having that uh, ability to be able to go to the footy club, watch your local team play, um, all of that sort of stuff is very, very important. So it also goes back to supporting your local guys because if you support your local guys. We can keep 
your workers going, yep. keep building machines yeah. to send all over the world. Yeah. Um, but also those guys can, uh, you know, go and support the footy team. Yeah. And that way then everybody everybody benefits. So I, I look, and also too, from a, from a player's point of view too, Rodney, I mean, it, it, it's a team sport, rugby. Um, like rugby union is, is probably more of a team sport than yeah. any other sport that I've ever actually Well, it caters across. for all shapes and sizes well, too, <laughs> and, you know, and it, uh, the thing is that if you, if you have that, that team mentality, well, you'll ca- on the, on the rugby paddock or whatever sport you're playing, you'll yeah. also have it here at work as well. And you know that you, you've got to show up, otherwise you let the team down, which I think yeah. is a really, really important thing, you yeah. know, so and as a, as a spectator, you get there, you get to chew the fat with your mates. If you're in the middle of a drought or you're drowning or whatever it may be, um, you get the chance to compare notes and yep. different ideas and just uh, take your mind off things. And uh, that's that's uh, very important. It is. Yeah. Um, where to for Enforcer? You've got the new product you were just talking about then. Yeah. Um, you've got anything else you're working on? Yeah, I think... Um, uh, we're continually improving. Um, you know, it's always been very much word of mouth for us. It's a, uh, as you know, that can, you know, you, you'll sink or float in that situation. And uh, word of mouth, um, word of mouth plays a huge part. It, it does, it does. You know, and you've got yeah. you've got social media, and you've obviously got websites and things like yep. that. So we're finding that um, we're very, very busy. I mean, rugby. We look at Australian rugby and think it's suffering and it might be a little bit at the top at the moment, you yeah. know, but underneath the surface, club rugby and junior rugby is so strong across yeah. the board, you know. We've just that, been to the under-16 state titles yep. at uh, at uh, Coffs Harbour and some of the quality of football oh, played is unbelievable. Some of the best football you'll see, you yeah. know, it's the best rugby you'll see and, 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 th- and that's it. So we're finding that not only are we selling new gear but we're also maintaining old gear and now we've got, yeah. you know, we're selling things like pads and hydraulics and servicing and that. And we have service that's agents in, yeah. you know, in the um, around the States. I've got a, a fellow talking to a, um, a fellow yesterday um, who's, uh, who's our service agent in Scotland and he's looking after the national machine for them and getting it right and yep. uh, looking after it. So um, that's a whole other part of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're fairly remote here and freight's a bit of a killer um, in Australia. We're, we're a long way down south and uh, um, but our dollar is a little bit lower, sort of hovers under the rest of uh, the rest of the world in a lot of cases. So the buying power, the buying power is pretty good for other countries. So yep. yeah, we miss out on the freight. We're like we're remote with the freight we pick up. Yeah, yeah. So um, and we have and and like you guys, we have good warranty. Yeah, you know. And if you can, if if you know you got back up, it's the first thing they ask. Understand. You know, and that's what re- yeah. that, that's what sells the second machine. Yeah, yeah. First machine is you have got to work for it, and, yep. and the second machine is you back up and support. Yeah, my word. Yeah, my word. Yep. And you guys can relate to that very much. So and we're we're the same here with our products. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's probably more important in um, in remote areas. Mm. Because, like you said, machines don't break down when they're in the shed. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, it's they only break down when we're paying. Yeah, when you're in the, yeah, that's right. That's um, right. And you're diversifying some of your engineering stuff too with uh, a contract that you've got for Harvey Norman, which is yeah. completely like okay, yeah. it's going from rugby uh, to, to, to Harvey Norman. Well, that's it. I say anything that's drought proof, you know, exactly. like they're all for it. So, um, yep. Uh, they they've been an incredible company for us. I mean, we've been doing work for them, uh, shop fixtures and fittings for, uh, for 20 years or more. And, uh, it's, a, there's a, just a bit of an old connection there and a couple of old school connections and, um, uh, that asked me whether I was interested in doing that sort of yep. thing because back 20 years ago, they were, they were struggling a little bit getting product done in Sydney. And, uh, anyway, uh, I just said, yeah, I'll have a crack at it and, yep. uh, did a few runs up the highway with different stuff. And, uh, and still to this day, we, um, we do a lot of work for them. They are a very good company to do work yep. uh, for and work with, I should say. And he's also, um, uh, Jerry Harvey and Katie Page are very much uh, focused on the Australian made product yep. um, for and supporting that and, local. and supporting that local yeah, that's side cool. of it. Yeah, yeah, can't speak highly enough. Yep, to yep. those guys because they fit out not just Harvey Norman stores; they fit out Joyce Main, they all do. their yep. subsidiaries as well. Yeah, they've got Space Joyce Main. Yep. They've, they've got Domain. They've got yeah, yep. a, lot, a, a lot going on, and you know, they employ a lot of people. And so um, like I said, next time I go into Harvey Norman, I'll be having a look. <laughs> Having a look at these guys, yeah, yeah, we've that's... just uh, had a bit of a bit of a bit of a gander. Yeah, yeah, just um, a, a few different things, which um, which is a, something else again. Yeah, to, uh, but also that yeah. rings true. The the drought proofing that you've said, mm-hmm. the diversification in your business, it adds complexity because you've got to sort of 
master a lot of yeah, different, yeah, <laughs> different yeah, tools. Wearing a, a few different hats. caps. Yeah. Um, but it also means that when one industry is a bit flat, another industry yeah. should be a little bit higher or can support you through those rough times. Like we do our importing and, yeah, that, and, and yeah, our manufacture yeah. of products. We can sell out Australia wide. So somewhere in Australia, agriculture will be okay. Yeah, It's yeah. always been like that and it probably always will be like that. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, some of the other parts of the business really rely on such a small area. So mm. um, if you try to rely on just the foot traffic coming through, buying your, your, your agricultural repairs, yeah. it'd be pretty hard. Yeah. But be, diversifying like yeah. you have, A, it's kept the business open, kept people employed, keep Borrower. Yep. You know, you've just said that the township itself spruced up the street. You've got people kind of coming in now and stopping rather than driving through. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good story, and I think you've played a big part in that. So, Keeps, uh, Rodney. It also, the, the, uh, the, the people that are working with my company as well, like my, my employees and, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be here without them. And, mm-hmm. and when you're doing a, quite a few different things, I mean, things can become a little bit complicated, but it also, also feeds the animal for them as well. It gets them <laughs> thinking about it. They're not just sitting there producing the same thing. They, you know, something will come in and, uh, you know, I'll go to them and say, right, are you blokes? I've been looking at the uh, scrum machine again and how we're binding and, you know, we'll be packing scrums in up here. The boys are wondering what the hell's going on, you know, and, uh, <laughs> Um, but they'll come back in the morning and say, listen, I was thinking about that. And they've come up with some great ideas themselves, yep. you know, and puts a spring in their step too. That's right. So, a bit, bit of ownership to bit, it as well. A bit of ownership, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's it's good like that. So, um, yeah, yeah it's It pretty, does take a, a pretty special team to do what you're doing as well. Yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys are the same, you know, as you, as you said, like there's a, you're wearing, we all wear quite a few different hats, but yep. I think. In today's age you yours are quite different it. hats though yeah they are <laughs> yeah 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 very whole different closet it's just yeah. yeah there's uh there's a bit there's a bit going on there but um anyway i think it's like anything if you're passionate about what you do i mean someone i might put in some big hours but i've uh an old friend of mine said to me once you know i said gee you work a lot of hours and he said well it's not really work you know if you love what you it's, do it's that old adage yeah. you do if yeah. what you do it's not work yeah that's right. um yeah. so your you gunsmithing you do mm. your, your connection with your rugby yeah engineering yeah design uh, inventing all of those things yeah. Um, you haven't got a job. You've got it. <laughs> You're loving it. Yeah. Well, I've got some pretty handy tax deductions, I can tell you. Yeah, yeah between the firearms and the rugby, it's all pretty. Yeah, it's all right. pretty handy. You know, go to a go to a test match in Wales, and uh, you yeah, know, it's a tax deduction. Hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you need a hand, <laughs> yeah, I'll carry yeah. your bags. <laughs> no, fantastic. Well, yeah. Thanks very much for your time, Matt. Really, really appreciate it. I think yeah. everybody uh, that would have been very interesting. There is some things we didn't even even touch on. <laughs> In regards to the bloody uh, Borua Hospital fire. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's, that, was, that was another story. Yeah, yeah. The day, yeah. the day I opened, that was a classic. I just, it was the 7th of July, 1995. And yep. I just finished fixing up the main street shop, getting it ready for my day to open. It was a Thursday night. I was with my older brother and we're yep. heading up heading up to the house. And I was living in town then. And I could see a glow on the other side of town. It was about 12.30 at night. And and uh, my brother said, that doesn't look right. We went over and had a look and our hospital was alight. So yeah, It was not, an old weatherboard place. It was, it? yeah, yeah, 100 odd years old. And so yeah. we raced in and we were dragging people out, you know, on their mattresses. And uh, we got, and there was a few of us there at that stage and we managed to get everyone out. It was July, so it was freezing, freezing cold, cold. So we're leaving them, leaving them uh, out on the lawn while we're going in. And we got everyone out and how no one got burnt is beyond me. And yeah. Uh, but uh, something funny did happen. One person, this older person that we grabbed, my brother was up one end of the mattress and I was down the other and we were going out and this old person was abusing my brother for waking him up and, what are you doing? Leave me here. And my brother said, if you keep carrying on like that, I probably will. <laughs> so, but we got everyone out and we fought, we fought that. We watched it burn the ground, mopped everything up. I went home, had a shower and yeah. then didn't hadn't been to bed, had a shower and went down and opened my business for the yeah. first day. You what know. a way to kick off the – Yeah, it your, was. You always remember that. That. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Well, an, and, and it's yeah. amazing. Some of the stories that come out of these podcasts and interviews yeah. that yeah. do, oh, I absolutely love this. I've got the best best <laughs> part of the job. I tell you. Poor old Vince has got to sit there listen to me waffle yeah. on and then he gets to waffle on while he edits. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. right. Yeah. Big shout out to Vince. Do a great yeah, job. Good good on night, mate. Yep. Thank yeah. you, mate. No, well, thanks very much for your time, mate. Um, really appreciate it. And your boys too for giving us a hand to get things set up. Yeah. Um, yeah I think they've headed off home now. Yeah. yeah. No, no, really appreciate your time, mate. And um, yeah, all the best. Uh, go to the Wallabies. 
Yeah. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Good Rodney. on you. Good on you, Rodney. No thank you. Indeed. Thanks, Vince. Thank right, you. everybody. Uh, thanks for, for joining in again. Um, it's a very interesting episode, this one. Uh, something that's a little bit different, but that's what we're about. Um, looking at all the different aspects of agriculture, um, whether it be yeah, direct or indirect. And, uh, yeah, no, and keep up the good work, everybody. Uh, like and subscribe. Make sure you uh, yeah, get, get around uh, all the other podcast uh, episodes that we've got. We've got some great episodes uh, that we've done, great episodes that are coming. And uh, yeah, the more people that listen and uh, watch on YouTube, the more we can get around and uh, share other people's stories so we can uh, highlight what agriculture in Australia is all about. And thanks, everybody, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.